ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week three of The Secret Place. I'm your boy Samuel McMillan here. Um, appreciate you for watching, tuning in, following along this series. This series has been uh, a great series to behold as we are going into uh, week three of The Secret Place. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to assume that you know what we've been talking about Um so week one, we, t we just asked a very simple question, are you building your secret place? And I believe that God wants us to establish a fervent prayer life with him. He wants us to continue to persist, to never give up, to continue to keep him first, to continually keep our mind fixed on him and uh, continuing to build a secret place. Week two, we talked about intentionality with our secret place. When you go into the secret place, what are you supposed to be doing in there? Um, what, do, what do you do with a prayer life? How do you continue to establish a prayer life? Are you intentional with your prayer life? And this week, uh, we are going into uh, a very, um, not necessarily a complex question, uh, but a question that I think needs to be asked of us. Uh, are you building a steadfast and persistent prayer life? Are you building a steadfast and persistent prayer life? I believe that Jesus wants us to be steadfast with our prayers. He doesn't want us to give up on our secret place, even when even when he doesn't answer uh, our current circumstances, our current situation, things that we have going on, people that we're praying over. When the answers don't come, are we staying persistent? <laughs> are we staying persistent? Do we have a steadfast prayer life? And I believe God wants us to establish that. Um, and it's clear in his word here uh, that he wants us to be steadfast. We're going to be in Luke. Uh, chapter 18, uh, and we're going to start in verse 1, and we're going to go all the way to verse 7. We're going to go line by line, verse by verse, uh, and we're going to see how to build a steadfast and persistent prayer life. Um, let's pray. God, help us, to rem help us to remember that we are in desperate need of you each and every day. We can't take another step. We can't go another moment without you in our life. Father, we pray that uh, through the reading of your word, we understand how to be persistent. We understand how to build a steadfast prayer life. Help us to continue, Lord, to, to stop seeking you for things and seek you for your heart behind whatever it is that you want us to know. Father, let these be your words. Uh, you speak on this platform. You move on this platform. You have your way on this platform. Uh, we don't we don't do this for praise and adulation. We do this to build and make disciples. <laughs> and so, Lord, we honor you. We lift up your holy name. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Are you building a steadfast and persistent prayer life? Um, I looked up the word, actually two words. Uh, I, I looked up the first word, steadfast, and I looked up the definition of it. And the definition of it is uh, dutifully firm and unwavering, marked by firm determination or resolution, not shakable. Um, I believe that when things don't go our way, when, when critics start coming at us and start attacking us, when things uh, unexpected happen, we begin to be shaken. And I believe the first place as a disciple of Jesus that begins to get shaken is your prayer life. When things aren't going your way, when you don't see how things are moving, you don't see the ways that God is moving, your prayer life gets affected by that. And I believe he wants us to build a steadfast prayer life. He wants us to be a strong in our prayer life. He wants us to continue to seek his face in our prayer life, even when things aren't going our way, when things, when the results don't happen the way they should, when, when things don't happen the way they should, he wants us to be steadfast. And I believe there's a couple things that, that being steadfast and being persistent, um, uh, that they, that, is a result of, of, of you doing that in the secret place. Number one, I think it continues to remind us to be humble. That we are to be humble in, the, again, pride and humbleness don't mix. So we are closing the door to pride. We're closing the door to all of the worldly things that we want to bring into the secret place. We're closing ourselves off and we are being humble. We, are, we have a, a humility about us in the secret. And I think that is a result 
of being steadfast in your in your secret place. You are you begin to be humble. You continue to seek His face, not for things, but for but for people and for the the gospel to spread, for God to move amongst the hearts of His people, for things to change uh, uh, um, and and shake in the atmosphere, for you to be a kingdom witness wherever you go. I think being steadfast produces being humble. And I think, and as we're going to see in Luke 18, um, there, there is a semblance of that. The second thing that I want to get into a definition is persistent. The definition of persistent is continually continuing firmly or abstainly in a course of action in spite of difficulty or oppression. If that doesn't already shake you, I don't know what will. Because <laughs> it shook me when I first found it. Am I being persistent? Am I continuing firmly or abstainly in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition? When things aren't going my way, when a result doesn't hit my door the way I think it is, when when I'm not seeing my pr my prayers get answered, am I continuing to be steadfast? Am I continuing to seek him? Am I continuing to knock? Am I continuing to ask? Even though... Uh, 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 things aren't going my way, and I want to. I want to make this point that 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 I think is is so powerful. Um, I don't want you to be steadfast for things, <laughs> not for materialistic things. I think when 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 people talk about blessing, it goes beyond materialistic things. And I think we ask God for, for the blessing of things when he wants to bless you in so many more ways beyond things. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He wants to give you freedom. He wants to bring justice to your doorstep. He wants to give you things beyond materialistic things. And I think that starts when you realize when you go into the secret place. Again, we talked about this last week. Stop carrying a laundry list in there. Be persistent about the things that he cares about, bending your will to his, shaping yourself to where you, do, you just don't care about you, you care about the things of God. I believe in this life we are to, we are to make as many disciples as possible and stop praying for our own, uh, uh, for our own uh, status to be built. I got convicted of that today. I don't want to do this for status. I want to do this to make disciples. I want to do this to continue to seek the face of God, to continue to lead people to Jesus, to continue to spread the gospel and to spread the truth of who he is, not for numbers, fame, and status. <laughs> Good God have mercy in this place. And so now that we've defined steadfast and we've defined being persistent, I want to get into the word of God. Um, here, starting in Luke chapter 18. If you have your Bible, go ahead and, or if you don't, go grab it. If you do turn to Luke 18, we're going to start in verse 1. Um, <clears throat> and I believe this is for us right here, right now. Tell yourself this is for you. Tell the person next to you this is for you. We destroy arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the kingdom of God. And we take captive every thought. We take captive every single thought that goes against the knowledge of God. And we bring it under submission. In the name of Jesus. Luke 18 verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Stop right there. That means Jesus cares about a persistent prayer life. <laughs> Stop believing the lie of the enemy that you go into the secret place once a week. You go into the secret place twice a week. He wants you to continue to build a place where you are seeking his face for his heart, not for things. Good God have mercy. Verse 2, he said in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. Verse 3, and there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. She kept coming to him. She kept coming to him. Even when she didn't get a result, she kept coming to him. She kept coming to him, grant me justice against my adversary. Here is the persistence. Here is the steadfastness that we need to adopt in our secret place. Just because something isn't happening for you, that doesn't mean you stop. You keep seeking his heart. You keep seeking what he has for you until he gives you yes or no or just wait. Or he grants you uh, uh, insight. He grants you knowledge, understanding, and wisdom on that situation. Don't stop seeking his face. For that, for, that, for that lost soul that you keep praying for, for that brother, sister, mother, cousin, daughter, niece, nephew that you keep praying for that needs to come back to Jesus, don't stop praying for them. Don't stop seeking his face. 
Don't stop getting on your knees and asking him to deliver them. Continue to seek his face. Continue to pray for that individual. Continue to pray for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Continue to pray for freedom. Continue to pray for justice. Continue to pray for, for peace. Here's what we have to start doing. We have to start putting on the full armor of God and fighting the enemy. We have to start putting on the full armor of God and fighting against the enemy that says you, you really only need to go in there once a week. You don't need to have God on your mind all the time. That is a lie of the enemy. He wants us to continue to stay steadfast, continue to have his word laid up on our heart and in our mind. He wants us to continue to stay in his presence, not, not, not escape it uh, for, for, for temporary pleasure or for temporary uh, satisfaction. He wants us to continue to keep his word in our heart that we might not sin against him. Good God have mercy in this place. Verse 4, for some time he refused. For some time he refused, but he finally said to himself, he reckoned within himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, even though this widow keeps being persistent, she keeps being steadfast, she keeps asking, she keeps seeking, she keeps knocking, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, good God have mercy. I will see that she gets justice. Woo! So that she won't eventually come and attack me. This is an unjust judge granting justice to somebody that keeps being persistent. And I want to ask you if an unjust judge... <laughs> if an unjust judge grants justice, grants peace, grants freedom, how much more will a holy God grant you peace, freedom, justice, knowledge in your life? Certain things only move when you become persistent. Certain things only happen when you become persistent. Certain things begin to change and shape itself. When you become persistent in your prayer life, she kept coming. She kept asking. She kept seeking. Even though the judge kept telling her no, she kept seeking. She kept asking. She kept knocking. And the door became open because of her persistence and her being steadfast. And I want to ask you, are you being steadfast and persistent in your prayer time? Are you being steadfast and persistent? Are you continuing to seek his face? Is, is, is the praise of God on your lips continually? Are you seeking his face continually? Or are you just there for stuff? Are you just there for things? Are you just there to get him to bend to your will instead of you bending to his will? Instead of you falling in line with what he has for you, are you falling in line with your own will, your own pride, your own uh, 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 status, your own fame, your own fortune, your own power? Are you being steadfast for the things of Jesus or are you being steadfast for the things of man? Good God have mercy. Verse 6, I'm almost done. <clears throat> and the Lord said, listen to what the unjust, said, the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? Sweet Jesus, who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? Verse 8, I tell you, he will see that they get justice. And quickly, that's how much he cares. And quickly. However, when, however, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? There's something that I read earlier today to kind of wrap this up. And it says, and I, I've kind of already said a little bit of this, but I want to read it. It says, if, if godless judges respond to constant pressure, how much more will a great and loving God respond to us? Persistent prayer keeps us in communication with God. Persistent prayer keeps us in communication with a holy Savior. Com 
Persistent prayer keeps us in communication with a God that wants to talk to you. You not just going in and blabbering the whole time in constant communication. Communication is a two-way street, not you just going in and saying all this stuff and leaving. That's why you leave unfulfilled. You leave unsatisfied. You leave with things still on your heart because it's not a two-way street. You just go in and then you leave, but God wants to talk to you. He wants to communicate with you. He wants to have a relationship relationship with you, but you just go in for things and you come out and you do not allow him to speak into your life. You do not allow him to give you peace, to give you the things you need beyond materialistic. I'm talking about real intangible things that you need in your life. You lack them because you are not persistent. And Jesus is waiting on you to be persistent for the things of him instead of the things of this world. Good God, have mercy. Persistent prayer keeps us in communication with God, helps us, helps us keep our requests in perspective, helps us keep our requests in perspective. Again, not going in for a house, car, money, fame, fortune, and status, but going in for love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, and self-control. Good God, have mercy. Going in for the intangible things that will bless you beyond materialistic things. Makes us consider what we really want God to do. Persistent prayer and persistent time in the secret place makes us consider what we really want God to do. So as you're examining your prayer life, as you're examining your time in a secret place, you should be asking yourself, am I going in there for materialistic things, for things that, that in the end will not matter? These things won't matter. But yet we keep praying for them and we keep asking for them. And God's like, no, turn your heart toward me. I want to show you things beyond your understanding, beyond your wisdom, beyond your knowledge. I want to reveal these things to you, but your heart is in the wrong place. Makes us consider what we really want God to do. And helps us recognize the answer when it comes. And helps us recognize the answer when it comes. Persistent prayer helps us recognize the answer of Jesus when it comes to your doorstep. If we know God loves us, we can believe he will, he will hear our cries for help. One more thing that I want to read that I wrote down. <clears throat> I, 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 I think I wrote this down like Tuesday or Wednesday. And it says the secret place out, and I, and I believe the Holy Spirit spoke this to me. The secret place starts out as a discipline, but turns into a steadfast desire to build a relationship with our creator. I'm going to read that again because that went right over a lot of people's head. The secret place starts out as a discipline. It starts out as, okay, I'm going to spend 15 minutes every day. I'm going to spend 20 minutes every day. I'm going to spend 30 minutes every day. It starts out as that. Your prayer time starts out like that. Your secret place starts out like that. But it turns into a steadfast desire, a persistent desire to seek the face of Jesus, to seek his heart for what he wants you to do, not what we want him to do for us. But what we should be doing for him, we should be in service to him. We should be going to him for what he wants us to do, not for what we want him to do for us. The secret place starts out as a discipline, but it turns into a steadfast desire. Good God have mercy to build a relationship with our creator. Steadfastness is what we lack when it comes to prayer. We pray for a spouse, we pray for somebody, we pray for a friend, a brother, sister, whoever, for three weeks and we don't see change and we stop. We pray, we pray to God for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for a month and we stop. If you keep being persistent, that thing will change. You you might who okay, gotta put this. <laughs> you might have to be persistent for 20 years for that thing to change. 
You might. You never know. You you might have you God may want you to keep seeking. And keep and along the way he reveals certain stuff to you you would have never gotten if you stopped. He wants you to keep on seeking. Are you building God have mercy. Are you building a steadfast and persistent prayer life? Are you building a steadfast and persistent prayer life? Let's pray. Jesus, man. Mm. Remind us that we're in desperate need of a Lord and a Savior each and every day. We can't take another step without you. We can't go anywhere without you. We can't do anything without you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith, and we need you every single day. Help us to be in service to you. To change our heart from, from God, what can you do for me to God, how can I help you? God, how can I continue to spread the gospel? God, how can I continue to speak to this person on my job? God, how can I continue to lead my family to Jesus? God, how can I continue to serve you wholeheartedly, not for things, but to see your heart behind it all? How can I continue to be a servant and a disciple of the Most High King? Help us to repent of pride and selfishness and greed and lust and the pride of life that tells us we need fame, we need status, we need fortune, we need all these things. Lord, we don't need it. We need your heart. If we seek you first, everything that you have for us will continue to come if we put and seek you first and seek the kingdom first. And seek your righteousness. Help us to continue to put you first. To continue to seek you no matter what. To continue to honor you. To continue to revere you. To continue to treat you as holy. You are a holy God. And we are to live holy because you are holy. Father, help us to build a steadfast and a persistent prayer life. Things are cool, but we want peace. Things are cool, but we need you. We need freedom. Our hearts are wicked, Father. We need to wring out our sin before you each and every day. We need to continue to put you first each and every day. We need to continue to pray persistently to you each and every day, every week, every month, every year. Help us to honor you with a persistent prayer life. Whew. It's in the name of the one we call holy, the name of the one we claim we serve, in the mighty name of Jesus. Whew. Somebody say amen. Amen and amen. Woo! Jesus. Mm. Well, Thank you for tuning in to week three of The Secret Place. Um, next week is going to be the last week unless God continues to, to keep this thing going. Um, next week will be the last week. Um, and we will talk, I'm not going to spoil it, but next week is going to be a really good one. You want to tune in, you want to tap in, um, continue to watch, continue to grow, continue to share, continue to learn. Um, as we are diving into what I believe God has put on my heart and he has burdened me with this. I mean, it is, it is a burden. <laughs> it is a burden for me. And here's, here's why, here's why I think it's a burden because I have a hard time, me personally, of just sitting still. I, I, I have a, I, I'm a natural worker. I love to be up. I love working on something, dreaming about something, visioning about something. Um, trying to see what's down the street and around the corner. That, 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 that's me. I, I am a big picture person. I'm a big vision person. Like I, I, I want to I wanna see years down the road. But I think what God is teaching me and he's showing me right now is, son, I need you present each and every day. I need you seeking me each and every day. 
I need you to slow down and spend time with me each and every day and then let me give you the wisdom. Let me give you the knowledge. Let me give you the vision. Depend on me. Be- okay, become childlike. And just slow down. You don't have to have it all together. I do. God is saying he has it all together. He just needs me to slow down and seek him. And I think that's been the biggest thing. And, and th- this series, if it ain't impacted anybody else out there, it's, it's impacting me for sure. Um, so I uh, thank you guys, man, for tuning in to week three. Appreciate you watching. Uh, next week will be week four. Thank you guys so much. I pray you have clear vision, and we'll see you next week. Peace.